Welcome back. Last week, we started to look at prophecy concerning how the church will be characterized in the end times and covered the heresy that is prophesied in the church. Today, we will continue to look at prophecy concerning how the church will be characterized in the end times. And we will look at the worldliness that is prophesied in the church. This look into the worldliness of the church will take us to Revelation chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and Matthew chapter 24. The title of this video is Worldliness in the Church. Revelation 3. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. 2 Timothy 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. And Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In my video titled, The Letter to the Laodicea, the Lukewarm Church, we learned a little background history about Laodicea. The name Laodicea means people ruling. It was located about 50 miles from Philadelphia, and it represents churches of all ages that are wrapped up in the materialism and unbelief. It definitely is a look at the apostate churches of our day, the churches that have fallen away from Christ, and the worldliness that exists. They were famous for their medicines, eye salve, their wool, their manufacturing, and banking. Materialistically, they seemed to have it all, but they were lacking spiritually. Jesus referred to himself as the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. The world, in their worldliness, seems to like it. Seems like it has tried to take many things and water them down, and the word Amen is no different. They have tried to take amen and make it just a meaningless conclusion to prayers or go as far as making it a joke. Even in politics, we've seen politicians end prayers with the words amen and a women in the world's attempt to be all inclusive and united. It's more than just some trivial word. It means so much more than we have trivialized it to mean. Jesus knew the works of this church of Laodicea. They were neither cold or hot, and it would have been better for them to be one or the other because that would be better than being in the middle. This church was self-satisfied. They went through formalities, often just playing church. You know what playing church is, giving God a little bit of your time and being justified in yourself that you have done your duty towards God for the day. There are many like that. They don't feel the need to spend any more time in the word, any more time in relationship with the Lord, because they don't feel that they need any more than they already have. 
This is not a good place to be with the Lord. He can work with hot or cold, but he goes on to say that because they are lukewarm and neither hot or cold, he will spew them out of his mouth. Haven't you spit something out of your mouth before when it wasn't good to you? This church is compared to lukewarm water that is worthless, that Christ will eject from his company. Why well, compare them to lukewarm water, though? Because the hot waters of Heropolis that was nearby was known for its medicinal qualities. Colossae was known for its cold, pure water, but Laodicea was forced to receive water through an aqueduct from the other area. So by the time water actually reached Laodicea, it was lukewarm water. It's like getting yourself a good hot cup of coffee, sipping it slowly. Then maybe you get caught up in something and when you go back to take a sip, you expect it to still be hot, but now it's cold. It's not what you expected and you spit it out. Had you started off with cold coffee, it would have been okay, but you were displeased because it was hot and now it's not. Jesus expected genuine faith out of the church of Laodicea. He could have worked with faith that was either hot or cold, but he definitely was displeased with their lack of genuine faith and he wanted nothing to do with that type of faith from them or any of the churches of today either. They said that they were rich and had everything they wanted, that they didn't need a thing. But they didn't realize they were wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. They were famous for their wealth, but wealth only gave them a false sense of security. It's not easy for wealthy people to humble themselves and realize that they need God. True wealth can only be found in God's grace. They were also known for their bankers, their medical school, their popular eye salve, and their textile industry. They had all that notoriety, but they were spiritually poor, blind, and naked, just like a lot of people and churches are today. Jesus advised them to buy gold from him, the kind of pure gold that has been purified by fire, and they, that they would have spiritual value. They would be rich in the sight of God. He also urged them to buy white raiment or white garments from him, which can only be obtained from being washed in the blood of the Lamb. These are garments that Jesus purchased with his own precious blood. It is his gift of virtue to all believers that Jesus freely gives so that he won't be naked or we won't be naked and ashamed. He also says that to buy ointment for their eyes from him so that they will be able to see. Even the ointment they were famous for making would not give them the spiritual vision that they would gain from genuine faith in Jesus when their spiritual eyes were finally open. Jesus let them know that as many as he loves, he rebukes and chastens. This is Jesus expressing his sharp disapproval of their lack of genuine faith, lack of spiritual understanding, and correcting or disciplining in it. He rebukes them because he loves them and urges the Laodiceans to repent of their lack of genuine faith and lack of spiritual understanding. Because of the worldliness that has crept into the church then and today, many people and churches today need to realize their lukewarm state and repent, turn away from it. Jesus is standing at the door and knocking. If you hear his voice and open the door, he will come in and will share a meal with you as friends. You as a victorious one will sit with Jesus on his throne just the same way Jesus was victorious and sat with his father on his throne. If your spiritual ears are open to hear what Jesus is saying, listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches because he is saying the same thing now that he was saying back then. He is saying that he is coming quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Hold fast to his teachings and stop giving attention to the worldliness of this world and the doctrines of devils. As believers... We don't know what we will have to endure and persevere through before the rapture. But thank God Jesus is coming quickly. Jesus began to give his Olivet Discourse or prophecy to his disciples in Matthew 24, as we learned in previous lessons. The Olivet Discourse 
got its name from the fact that Jesus answered his disciples' questions concerning the temple and the end times events from the Mount of Olives, which was located to the east of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. The Mount of Olives is the place Jesus left this earth from after he appeared to his disciples in his resurrected glorified body, and it is the place where Jesus will return when he comes back to rule. Beginning in Matthew 24 and extending to Matthew chapter 25, Jesus prophesies to his disciples about the signs of this present age, signs of the great tribulation, signs of the coming of the Son of Man, the judgment of the nations, and teaches them about the prophecies through the parables of the two servants, the ten virgins, and the talents. So Jesus is telling them about this present age and reaches further to tell them about the distant future. By the time we reach verse 37, Jesus is telling them that the coming of the Son of Man will be like it was in the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, the people ate, they drank, they married wives, they were giving their daughters and sons in marriage, and they just went about life as if Noah had never warned them that the flood was coming. They just went on as they always did, right up until Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Jesus is coming back again, but the worldliness of the world will have people blinded and unaware. Many in the world will still be living ungodly lives when Jesus returns. There was an antichrist spirit that was very prevalent in the days of Noah that caused an apostasy of falling away that opened up the door to all kinds of immorality. We begin to see in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that the source is inside of men manifesting itself by the fact that men are lovers of their own selves. They are covetous. They are boasters, proud, blasphemers. They are disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And as verse 5 tells us, men are seen having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And from such, we are supposed to turn away. I said it in a previous video, but it's worth repeating here. People today believe that they are the center of all things. The world teaches them that everybody has their own truth and that their truth is the only truth that they should go by. They are the center of everything, and everything else revolves around them. If they see something they want, no matter if it belongs to someone else, they feel entitled to it and may even take it. Things are so perverted, you can't even turn on a movie without hearing obscene language today. Even kids are cursing in movies today. There used to be some restraint in a PG movie, but PG is seriously the new, relate, the new rated R, and kids are running around blaspheming. The world just keeps redefining what the Bible says about all kinds of things like marriage, men and women, to where the natural institution of marriage and the natural things concerning men and women are just being exchanged for same-sex unions, relationships with no strings attached, shacking up, you name it. All people are doing today and in the future, as things get worse, is appearing to be godly on the outside. And some, so people can think and look at them and say that they look like Christians. They sound like a Christian, so they must be a Christian. But they deny or reject the power that can actually make them godly. They say with their lips and fake actions that they believe in Jesus Christ and deny his power. These kinds of people, the world tells us to stay away from. This is the kind of worldliness that has begun in the church and will continue to get worse in the church. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. Don't put off salvation. It might be the last opportunity. Be encouraged and don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel.